Welcome to WQLM PBS. I'm Miss Molly, and here I am in downtown Erie, Pennsylvania at the Erie Art Museum. Today we're going to learn about museum manners. I'm going to teach you how to um, look at art and the behaviors you want to have in the art museum. Are you ready to learn? Let's go. Well, here we are inside the museum. Now, what is an art museum? An art museum is a place that has paintings and drawings and sculptures that you can go around and look at from different artists. I'm sitting here in front of some um, artwork from artists and I wanted to talk to you about the rules before we continue looking at anything else. We're gonna have some museum manners. Now when I say museum manners, I want you to think about things you would do at school. Would you be running through your school? Probably not. It's important to walk in an art museum so we don't run into people or the art that's hanging on the wall. And sometimes we'll see art on a podium, a stand placed, and we wouldn't want to bump that over. Another museum manner you want is to use inside voices. Now when you're outside at the playground, you can scream and yell, but when you're inside, you use an inside voice and talk quietly to the people next to you. If your friend was down the hallway, maybe down there, you wouldn't want to say, hey, Bobby, as loud as you can. That would be disruptive. So we're going to use walking feet, inside voices. The other thing is you need to not touch the art. Now, I have a mirror here. And if every single person touched this mirror, they would leave an oily fingerprint. So think how that would translate to the wall. If you were touching those paintings and everybody touched, 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 we wouldn't be able to see the painting anymore. It would be covered with our dirty fingerprints. So we're gonna not touch art. And sometimes sculptures get broken if you touch them. So no touching. So we have walking feet, inside voices, and we will just look with our eyes at the artwork. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about is respectfulness. These artists have worked so long and hard on their artwork and we want to be respectful when we're looking at their pieces. You might not like every artwork you look at, but it's always nice to be respectful. They worked a long time on it and I know you always work a long time on your artwork and you wouldn't want anybody laughing or giggling and pointing fingers. You don't need to say anything about that. You could just say, it's not my flavor. Now that we have all those rules down, are you ready to go look at some art? Yeah? Okay, do you have your walking feet? Do you have your inside voices? Do you have your hands folded and not touching art and your respectfulness? I'm sure you do. Let's go look at a couple pieces of art. Come on. Here, look, I found a lithograph by Alexander Calder. Now remember our museum manners. I don't want to get too, too close. I want to stay about 18 inches away from the artwork. Um, and I'm noticing that there's a little card that will tell me the name of the artist and the title of the artwork and the year that it was created. And it also tells me what kind of art it is. This is a lithograph with which is like a print. But if we're looking at this, I like to see what's going on. I like to look at the colors I see. I see, can you tell me what color this one is? Yeah, it's yellow, yellow like the sun. And I see a little bit of, what's that one? Red, red like cherries. And then this last color here is blue like the ocean. He also adds a little white and black in there. So I'm now looking at the shapes. Can you see some shapes that you recognize? You know, this is like a circle. We've got a few of those, don't we? This is like a rounded triangle. And now I'm starting to think, what could this be about? This title says it's untitled, so we don't know the title, but what do you think it's about? I think I'm seeing the beach with the water, and maybe these are people. And maybe this is a big umbrella. There's no right or wrong answer when you look at art. You can use your imagination to create any ideas about artwork. There's no right or wrong answer. If we look over at this one here, 
What's really great about this one is there's a little bit of fun facts telling us a little more about this artwork. So there might not be these fun facts for every piece, but some will. This fun fact is talking about kabuki and telling us what kind of um, Japanese theater is. Isn't that amazing? Oh, guys, look. This is by David Hockney. This is another lithograph, but I don't know if you remember when we looked at our pet portraits and I showed you that man with his little dachshunds, those little long skinny dogs, that was that artist. He has a piece of art right here in the Erie Art Museum. David Hockney, his potted daffodils. This is a still life. And it's exciting, I see all these lines and textures of a pot of, of daffodils. Amazing. Oh, what's over here? Artists, look, here's a Pablo Picasso. This is the circus rider. And it's also a lithograph, which is like a print. But what I like about this is there's a lot going on in this artwork that I can study and make a story. I use the title to help me, the circus rider, and I'm looking now, now I see a uh, man here, and if you look carefully, he's holding this um, pole. I'm not quite sure what he's using with it, so I'm going to continue looking through the artwork to see if I can make some uh, good guesses in my head. I see the horse, and I, what I know about circus is that the horses do get fancy. They have fancy costumes on, and I can see that that horse has his feathers on top of his head, and then if you look, there's a lady on top of that horse and she has a busy costume on as well and it looks like she has more feathers on top of her head. So I can just imagine them at the circus doing some tricks for the audience to watch. But I love this artwork and I like all the different lines. You remember we've been talking a lot about lines. We have zigzag lines, wavy lines, curvy lines, thick lines, thin lines. So many different types of lines. What do you suppose she's doing now? She looks like she's looking at the man that's holding that pole. And maybe this is water. Maybe she's leading the horse to the, get something to drink. Maybe she's about to go on stage in the big top. What do you think? Wow, you did a really great job in the museum with your manners. We had walking feet, quiet voices, hands to ourselves and we were very respectful. I hope you had fun in there. Are you ready to do some art room and art supply manners? We're going to head into the studio and we're going to talk about how to use our supplies and take care of them and how to ask for things nicely when we're sharing with friends. We're also going to read a book and do an art project too. Are you ready to go? Let's go! Welcome back to the art studio. We just learned about our museum manners and now we're going to talk about art manners. And you might not be in a studio, you might be at home in your house working, but these rules will still apply to where you're at. If you are at home and you have some art supplies, it's important to keep them in a, um, a special spot so they're all together. And these crayons came in a box and I like them in my box so I'll keep them in there but sometimes it's easier if you have like a pencil box and you want to put them there. It's just important to make sure when you're done using them that you put them back where you got them. Mm -hmm. I also brought some markers here. Do you know what happens to a marker when you leave the lid off? Yeah, it dries up and then it doesn't work anymore. So it's important to take care of your supplies too. If you're done using your marker, make sure you put that lid on and get it to click. So we're going to take care of our supplies and we're also going to be safe with them. I have a pair of scissors here. I would never want to uh, just go spinning them around because that would not be safe. This could go flying off the table at somebody. So be sure that you're safe and respectful. And it's always great to be respectful with your um, classmates, your family members, your friends. If you were using a green marker and your friend wanted to use it, what might you say? Would you say, oh, um, Julie, 
may I please borrow the marker when you're done with it? And I hope Julie would look at you and say, sure, you can borrow this when I'm done with it. Can you think of any other art supplies that you could ask your friend nicely if you could borrow? Maybe colored pencils, maybe a glue stick. You could even practice with a little stuffed animal if you don't have anybody with you um, around you when you're doing your art project. So we have let, well, rule, art manners, taking care of our supplies, being safe with our supplies, and being respectful to the people we're working with. All right, now listen, I have brought a book called Regina's Big Mistake by Marissa Moss. Now this book is about a little girl named Regina, and she has a little trouble in her art class with her art project. But there's also a couple buddies in her class that might not be respectful. Let's see how you would handle the situation. Are you ready to read the story with me? Regina's Big Mistake by Marissa Moss. Everyone in Mrs. League's class got a piece of paper. Everyone was supposed to draw a jungle or a rainforest, and that meant Regina too. Look, Regina has her markers and her crayons and her eraser all ready to go. Regina stared at the big blank piece of paper in front of her. Her fingers froze on her crayon. Where should she begin? Hmm. Stuart had already drawn two trees thick with leaves, and Natalie was concentrating on a fierce lion. All around Regina, jungle sprouted out, but her paper stayed blank. What are you making, joked Josh, an invisible jungle? Ha! Well, that doesn't seem very respectful that Josh said that, does it? Does it? Regina blushed. She hunched over her paper and lightly touched it with the tip of her crayon. She started to draw a jungle flower. She drew one petal, then the other. But the second petal was bigger than the first one. Uh-oh, what do you think she will do? Regina groaned, a mistake. She tried to erase the second petal, but the crayon doesn't erase, and she tore the paper instead. She crumpled it up quickly before anyone could see her ugly mistake. Oh, she seems like she was frustrated. What happened to your drawing, asked Mrs. Lee. I made a mistake, Regina mumbled. Well, try to draw around it next time, said Mrs. Lee. You're wasting paper. Oh, Regina smoothed out her new piece of paper. Anything was possible, as long as it was empty. But somehow, her hand could never draw what she saw in her head. Stewart's jungle was almost finished now. Full of strange ripe fruits and colorful birds, Natalie's lion stalked like an antelope. Regina wanted to cry. She could never draw anything so beautiful. Don't give up, Regina. Oh, almost done, said Mrs. Lee. Ten more minutes. Regina picked up a brown crayon. She had to draw something. Carefully, she started to draw a tree like Stewart's. Hey, don't copy me, he growled. I'm not, said Regina, and she quickly drew three big branches on her tree. But those heavy branches made her tree look funny. Regina bit her lip. Was this another mistake? Could she draw around it like Mrs. Lee said? She looked at the jungles growing around her. It's not a mistake. I can fix it, muttered Regina. She started to draw a line under a tree. I'm so proud of her for working around her mistake. That's awesome. Copycat, said Natalie with a sneer. I am not, Regina gulped. My line's different from yours. And she quickly drew a tongue hanging out of the lion's mouth. She solved the problem, but these friends don't seem very respectful. My lion's thirsty, said Regina. She ne he needs some water. So she drew a lake, then a frog, then some fish and a duck to go into the lake, and some flowers alongside it. The jungle grew and grew till it filled up the paper. Regina smiled. All her jungle needed now was the sun. She carefully drew a yellow circle, but her crayon wobbled, and the circle had a dent in it. I've ruined it, she cried, just when it was getting good. No more paper, warned Mrs. Lee. You'll have to make the best of it. Yeah, joked Joshua. Just pretend it's a very lumpy banana. 
Regina looked hard at the wobbly circle. It wasn't a sun, but it wasn't a lumpy banana either. Suddenly she recognized what it was. Oh, it was a moon. She quickly, she drew a face in her moon and surrounded it with stars and comets and a purple black sky. Wow, said Stuart, that's a great idea. A jungle at night. I wish I'd thought of that, said Natalie. Now that's what I like, those kind words. Mrs. Lee tacked all those pictures up on the wall. Good work, Regina, she said, smiling. I love your moon. So Regina was able to fix that mistake. The jungles glowed with their bright colors. Each one was different. Each one was beautiful. And even with all her mistakes, Regina thought hers was perfect. All right, now we're ready to get started on our art project. I thought we would create something just like Regina did. We're going to do a jungle scene, and I want you to think of an animal that you might want to put in your jungle scene. I'll give you some other ideas in a few minutes, but you're going to need to get a white piece of paper and something to color with, uh, crayons, markers, watercolors, colored pencils, whatever you have at home. And we're going to, we're going to practice our good art manners while we do this lesson, and I'm gonna show you how to draw a toucan, but you can draw whatever animal you want. If you're not ready to get started, that's all right. You can just go to wqlnpbs.org and find the lesson there with all the materials you're gonna need. So go gather your stuff and come back, and when we get started, um, I'm gonna take you step by step on how to draw a toucan, but you can draw whatever you want. All right, I have all my art supplies with me. I'm going to use some crayons, and I did bring some markers, too. I think maybe I'll use some of those, and I have my white paper. But I just wanted to look at a few things we might find in a rainforest or a jungle. Here are some lee or some flowers. I want you to look at the different shapes and colors. These have pointed lines or pointed um, ends on the petals. Some different types of animals. We've got snakes. Look at that wavy line that that snake would use. And we have a jaguar here. I'm thinking like a circular shape for the head and the eyes. We have a toucan here, looking at the colors. I really like this toucan, and I'm thinking of the shape I would use to do his head and his beak. It's like a triangle line with a curved tip. And we have this beautiful waterfall. And look at all these different shades of green in the leaves. You see all those? All right, I've got some ideas brewing in my head. I think I'm ready to get started. I think I'm going to draw with my black marker first, but you can draw with whatever you want. Have you thought of your animal? Like I said in the beginning of the video, I was going to do a toucan. But you can do a jaguar, you can do a monkey, you can do a snake. Or you could do the toucan with me and then maybe add some more um, animals in your background. All right, so that toucan that I showed you had just like a upside down U, this curved line that goes up near the top and comes back down. I'm going to air draw it first, and when I'm ready, slowly going to take care and think of my line where it's going. And now I'm going to get that big beak. When I'm ready, so take your time. A little curve on it, didn't it? And then I'll do a line down the middle so he can open his mouth. Let's go ahead and think about his eyeball. Would I put his eyeball there? No. Let's get it up here in his head. You can draw a little circle around it if you want. Now those two cans, they had a little white patch right around their eye. So I'll grab that and do that. Now we're gonna put some big leaves in the background. So you can take your marker or crayon, put it on the edge of your bird or animal and draw a line out to the edge. We're just gonna section this off. If you wanna do some curved lines, that will start making it look like big leaves. Like that. Do you want to put a flower in your artwork? You would start out with the circle and then do your petals. Or um, you can do a 
curved lines like that. You, I like when things go right off the page. I think maybe I'll just add one more. Maybe this flower is going to go off the page over here. And you don't need to do your flowers like mine. You can do them any way you want. All right, when you're done, remember, art manners. Get it to click, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and look at my crayons. You might have yours in a box. I have mine all set up here. And I, saw, I remember that jungle had lots of different colors of green, so I'm going to make sure I get a lot of different green colors and I do the edges first and then I'm coloring neatly inside my shape. If you have somebody working with you today, try to use some of those art manners. Say, may I please borrow that green crayon? Sure, you can draw, draw with it. You don't have anybody working with you. You could have your stuffed animals set up and practice on them. Do you have a nice compliment to give somebody? Or something, your animal? I really like how you're taking time coloring your background. If you have a, a crayon that is missing the tip, this isn't garbage. You can just take the paper and peel it down a little bit like that. And what do you suppose you should do with this, this garbage? Would you go ahead and throw it on the floor? Or would you make a little pile and throw it out when you're ready to clean up? Yeah, I'd throw it out in the garbage when you're done. All right, I want you guys to continue coloring, taking your time, and using your art manners. That means you're going to be putting your art supplies away when you're done using them. And you're going to clean up all your area. And you're going to be kind to the people or your stuffed animal that you're working with today. Think of things that you could, how you would ask nicely. It's good to practice because then you'll just know how to do it when you're in your situations, when you're at your friend's house making an art project, or when you're at school, wherever you might be. All right, now that I'm done cleaning or done coloring my toucan, now's the time where I'm going to be using my art manners again. I'm going to put my crayons away so they'll be ready for the next time. They'll also be great if somebody else wants to use them. I'm making sure my lid's on my marker, putting that away. Any sort of garbage is going to go in the garbage can. And I hope you were able to think of some kind things to say to your stuffed animal or the person you were working with today. Did they do a great job with you using their art manners? I hope so. Well, artists, that's it for today. We got a lot accomplished. We learned all about manners today, and we learned how to use our manners in an art museum. We also learned how to use our art manners when we're doing our art projects by taking care of our supplies and being kind, of our, being kind to our friends. I hope you continue to use those manners when you're out and about. I know you will be going to school or you'll be going to uh, a friend's house and you will be able to use those manners on how to take care of your supplies by putting them away and how to ask somebody if you can borrow something. But I also hope you make it to the art museum too and find some of those wonderful artworks using those good manners that we learned about earlier. Till next time, thanks for watching WQLN PBS, where learning's brought to life. Adios.